All right, after implementing the reader, processor, and writer, now we need to define the step because I mentioned earlier that we will start from the bottom to the top. So after preparing all these three elements, now we need to define our step. So I will create a public step. So here, as you can see, we have an interface called step and it comes from the batch package. All right, so here I will call it, for example, import step, or you can call it or give it another name. And in order to make this one a bean, of course, we need the bean annotation. In order to create and define a step, let's do return. And then we have an object called step builder. And within this step builder, we need to provide two information. First, the step name. So let's call it CSV import. So you can give it any name you want. And then let's see the constructor in here. So let's download the source. And now you see that for this step builder, it takes a name and then a job repository. So for the job repository, we need to inject an object. And as explained before, Spring already provides us, like the Spring batch context already provides us with an object of type job repository. So here I will create private, final, and then job repository, and I will call it job repository. So let's use this one right here. So this is my job repository. After that, we need to define few other properties. So here, then we have something called chunk. So the chunk means how many records or how many lines we want to process at a time. So now let's say, for example, we want it to be 10. And also, as you can see, we need an object of type platform transaction manager. So let's go ahead and inject an object like that. So I will do private, final, and then platform transaction manager, and then we call it platform transaction manager. So here, let's provide it as a second parameter. And this chunk is a generic type. So we need to provide what are the types. So here we want student. The input and the output is also a student. All right, exactly as we did in the processor. So now within the step, we need to define the reader. What is the reader, which is this one or this method that we implemented in here. So our reader is the item reader bean. And then we have the processor and our processor is the processor or the bean of type processor we created before. And now we have the writer, which is our writer method or writer bean. So let's rename this one to make it writer instead of write and then build. So in this way, we can define a step. So after the step comes the job, the job itself. So we need now to create another bean. So bean right here and then public. And then we have an interface called job. So this one, for example, let's call it run job. So this is the job that we want to execute. And within a job, of course, we can define multiple steps. So let's return a new job builder. So not job step builder, but just job builder. And then within this job builder, we need to, to give it a name. So for example, let's call it import students. And then of course we need again our job repository. Because if you remember from the diagram, all these steps like the step and the job, all of them, they need to use the job repository. And then we have a method called start. So the start here, it takes two types of parameters. So whether a flow or a step, in our case, we want to execute one step. All right, so this one, we need to give it or to pass our import step bean. And then we have another method in, or in case, for example, you want to pass the second and the third and so on and so forth, like the steps you defined, you have a next method where you can pass the second step to be executed. All right, but in our case, we have only one. And then let's just say build. So in this way, we have our job, we have all the configuration of our batch processor. Let's move on and create an endpoint in order to import or to upload our CSV file and persist it in the database. Now let's move on and create a controller, which will be our entry point in order to be able to execute this job. So I will close everything in here 
and inside the student I will create for example a student controller so as I mentioned before creating an endpoint or a controller is not mandatory because we want to have some scheduled tasks so this is how the real world projects work so we want to have a scheduled tax task that will execute automatically the job but for the sake of this tutorial I want to show you how to do that so here I will just create a REST controller and I will give it a, a request mapping. So here I will call it simply slash students or you can do slash API slash students. And of course I need my required args constructor from Lombok. And now all I need to do, I need to inject an object of type job launcher. So this job launcher interface is the one that we spoke about previously. So let's call it job launcher. And of course, we need also the job that we want to execute. Again, I will make it private final and then job and I will call it job. So now I will simply create a post mapping. So this because I just want to invoke or to, to call this endpoint. And for that one, I have here. So public void import CSV to DB, for example, and then I will call it job. So the method, the method is called import CSV to DB job. And then what I need to do first, I need to create job parameters. So this is what we spoke about before for a job. We need to pass some job parameters. So here I will create an object of type job parameters and then we call it job parameters equals new job parameters builder. And then we have an add long method. So this one, we have a key and a long parameter. So we want to set when this uh, task or when this job should start. So here, let's say start at, and then we want this job to start immediately. So let's take the system dot current milliseconds. So when we call this method or we, we call this endpoint, I want my job to be executed immediately. And then I have a method to job parameters that I need to call. Now, what I need to do next, I need to call my job launcher and then run. And I want to run a job. So I want to run my job with my job parameters. All right. So this one needs to be surrounded with try and catch, or we need to add the throws in or to the method. So let's add exceptions method to signature or here we can select surround with try and catch and as you can see here it will catch many exceptions so let's group them together also we can group this one and we can group this one so here we can just throw a new runtime exception or we simply for the sake of this one just print stack trace but in a real world what we want to do is to log these issues all right so now our rest endpoint is ready let's move on and start testing and also we will be improving so this is not the end of this tutorial we will be improving so we will see what are the issues what are the anomalies that we will be detecting while importing a csv file and mainly while importing a huge csv file with an important number of lines